A very heartwarming letter to me and my YouTube friends. Are QRP radios better for full duty cycle? Proper POTA hunter etiquette? And wiring mixed wattage solar panels this time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K at MRD. If you guys have radio questions for me, shoot me an email. K at MRD at iCloud.com. I would love to hear from you. We've got four tantalizing things to talk about, so let's dive right in. This first one is just a great letter. I love to hear these things. He says, hi there, Mike. Not really a question, just a statement. I passed my general this past Saturday, April 13th, and yesterday, April 14th, I had probably the best experience I've had while being on the radio. Made a quick 20 meter and 40 meter dipole, awesome, but spent all day on 20 hunting poda, and man, I was floored with the amount of people on. Yeah, buddy, so much more than I am used to on 10 meters. Isn't that awesome? See all you techs, listen to this. 10 meters is fun, but ah! I can't wait to get to the park and start activating 20 meters. I wanted to thank you as well as guys like Josh, Steve, and the Smokin' Ape for sharing y'all's knowledge mixed with practicality in y'all's videos. Anyway, thanks again for your channel and thanks for being one of the YouTube Elmers a lot of us might only have. What you do makes a difference. Well, thank you so much. And I'm sure Josh, Steve, and the Smokin' Ape and uh, Jason and hell, maybe even Frank uh, are part of that as well. That is fantastic. Congratulations on your general. Well, thanks so much for writing in. That that really does, uh, it, it lets us know that what we're doing is actually uh, worthwhile. So thanks so much. I really do appreciate it. Now, we've got an interesting question. This ham writes, I know that most 100 watt QR radios are not designed to run full duty. So we should turn down our output power to say 25% or 25 watts for data modes like FT8. Are QRP radios intended to be run at full wattage on data mode since they are considerably less power or should they be reduced by a factor of four as well? In other words, is it advisable to run a 705 at full power 10 watts on data modes or should power be reduced to something like two to three watts? I know you run an IC705 sometimes, but I never noticed your power when working data. Or with the Zygu G90, is it uh, advisable to run the full 20 watts on data? The reason for my question is that I'm not losing much if I transmit from my 891 at 25 watts data to a G90 at 20 watts data. Yes, 100 watts for SSB can be handy, but 25 versus 20 watts for data isn't significant. It's not significant for sideband either. So here's the deal. Radios are designed to put out a certain amount of power regardless of what power that radio is. So let's say uh, my 7300, which is my main portable radio now, let's say I'm out doing a digital activation. Almost never will I run 100 watts on that radio. I generally run 69% power because 69. (laughs) It's just a good number for me, and it should be a good number for you. The same thing Generally, when running a QRP radio, I'm not going to run full bore. And reason being, regardless of the power output of the radio, they're still all designed kind of the same way. And you want to treat them the same way. So let's use an analogy. Let's say you have a muscle car. Let's say you got a Ford Mustang with the, with the saline package, big supercharged V8, right? And it's a stick, because you should have that kind of car as a stick. You can run the tachometer up to seven, 8,000 RPMs. It'll work, but it's not going to work as long. So generally, when you get up to you know a certain amount of RPM, you're going to shift gears, you're going to go faster, and you're going to prolong the life of that engine by not constantly running it at 7,000 RPMs, 100 watts, you know, full power on your radio versus, you know, maybe shifting gears at a lesser RPM. Same thing with a QRP radio. Let's say you've got a little Ford Pinto four banger, right? It's a four cylinder engine. You can still rev it up to 7,000 RPMs probably. It'll probably explode because it's a Pinto, but it's the same thing. You're putting more wear and tear, unnecessary wear and tear on your engine, which would be the finals of your radio. So, Can your radio run full power digital? Yes. 
Have I done it? Absolutely. There have been times where I haven't been able to get that contact on FT8 and I've cranked the power all the way up to 100%, made the contact, then I jumped it back down to 69% or uh, with the 705, maybe five watts with the G90. Um, I kind of don't care about the G90. I feel like I can just kind of handle anything, um, but I, I don't generally run full bore when I'm running digital. So uh, I would treat them all exactly the same, run a little bit less power on digital modes, sideband, full bore. CW is a little different because it's such a quick duty cycle. It's just on and off. So 100 watts isn't as um, bad for the radio. Now, if you just key down, that's the same thing as keying down 100 watts on FT8. So it can... Um, shorten the life of the finals and that's generally why those things tend to break so hopefully that answers the question with ft8 it doesn't take much uh at all but use the most amount of power you need to make the contact how's that for an answer thanks for writing in next we have a question about proper poda hunter etiquette this viewer says what is the proper poda etiquette for this as a poda hunter my qth I often hear an activator and a DX station in which the DX can't hear the activator. I made contact with an activator and when I was done, I could also hear the DX station calling me. Knowing the frequency is in use, I did not answer the DX. I didn't ask the DX to go up or down a few hertz. That last question kind of threw me off, but I guess so he didn't come back to the DX guy, but he also didn't ask him to move. I think that's kind of the question there. So oftentimes, uh, we're out there as activators. We listen, we listen, we listen some more, ask if the frequency's in use, then we go about our merry way. Sometimes you'll hear another station come in. The bands change. It's just, it's natural. There's nothing you can do about it. It's the ionosphere doing what the ionosphere does. So that DX station very likely doesn't hear the POTA operator but he heard you and he wanted to work you. So that's cool, he got a DX that wants to come back to you. I would say you did the right thing in not acknowledging the DX because you knew the frequency was in use for the POTA activator. Do I have a problem with people coming on the air and saying the frequency is in use on my behalf or in my defense? No, I don't. That's, that's kind of a personal thing though, uh, you know, sometimes, we as the operator, the activator, can't hear them. But if someone else can hear the DX station, uh, you know, so long as they haven't been working there as well and we're kind of just starting to interfere with each other, you know, if he just came on and started calling CQ, yeah, guys, feel free. If it's one of my activations and you can hear that DX station, let them know the frequencies in use. I, I wouldn't consider that bad etiquette personally. So, guys, drop a comment. What do you think? What would you do in this situation? Would you would you let the DX station know that the frequency is in use, or would you just let the activator do his activation? Clearly, he wasn't interfering with the activator, so uh, there wasn't any interference on his end, but perhaps the guys who were listening and hunting him uh, were potentially getting interfered with. Yeah, th that's that kind of gray line, you know? That's just... That's ham radio. That's the way it be. It's the way it do. So I don't know. What say you guys? Lastly, we got a question about solar panels, and I'm going to go a little more in depth than what he's asking. But he says, I got a question. I have two 28 watt solar panels that I want to use to charge a bio -ano battery. I have USB ports coming out of the panels that push five volts, two amps or something like that. Can I use that directly into a charge controller out to the battery? So I'm kind of assuming here, but I'm assuming he's using the, the BioNO 28 watt solar panels because they do have a USB on there and they do exactly uh, what he's talking about. So no, you don't want to use the five volts out. One, it's not enough voltage for a charge controller to see a solar panel. My solar panels put out 20 volts roughly. And that's kind of what a charge controller is expecting to see to bring that voltage down to the, let's just say 14.6 volts to fully top off a lithium iron phosphate battery. So don't do that, but let's take a field trip out into my yard where it's completely overcast here in Texas. So this is probably gonna be the worst uh, solar demonstration you're ever gonna see, but the wiring and everything uh, 
should still be fundamental. And we're gonna throw some different wattage panels on and see what happens. So let's take a look. So I've got a few panels set up here in the yard. I've got a 60 watt power film. That's a 100 watt power film with I think the Burt and Guinness's paw prints on there. Satan's out here as our little helper. And presumably these are the solar panels that he's talking about. These are the 28 watt Biwano panels. And they have on them this little port right here. So you've got a USB out right there. That's just for charging USB devices, phones and such. This chain here, you can actually plug one panel into another with the uh, barrel connectors if you want, but I have cut my plugs and put power poles on them, of course. But what you can do is get something like this PowerWorks PD-8. This is an eight power pole, just a distribution block. This also comes in like a just a four outlet. There's multiple variations of these kinds of things. Or you can even just make, this is a little jumper I made when I like first learned about power poles. I can't believe I still have this thing, but I just, one power pole into four and I just daisy chained them all together. So however you wanna do it, you can connect your panels to this. Now, why would you wanna connect more than one panel? And is it okay to connect different sized panels? So. Remember, we've got a 60 and 100 watt over there. Manufacturers generally recommend to not uh, connect different wattage panels together. Uh, I like to live dangerously and uh, don't follow that rule. I've connected multiple different wattage panels together with no problem. Do make sure they're all the same voltage. I tested mine. Every panel here we're looking at today is putting out roughly 20 volts right now, and it's overcast. So the first thing we can do is simply plug in, I've got just a little cheap charge controller here, and this is one of the 28 watt panels. We can see we're getting almost nothing, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 amps. What does this thing say? About 0 0.3, 0 0.2 amps. So not a lot, especially when it's cloudy, we might want more panels. So by employing something like this, we can just plug multiple panels into this distribution block, and it doesn't really matter where, and then plug our charge controller back in, and now we're getting 0 0.5, 0 0.6 amps, okay? So we've just doubled our power by using more panels. So now what about different wattage panels? Well, think of the mighty Mississippi River. It starts all the way in Los Angeles, California, goes over the Colorado Rockies, and dumps out into uh, the Everglades in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. All the little tributaries and streams and everything that dump into that add to it. And that's the same thing that we're doing with uh, solar panels. We've got three different size solar panels on the ground right now. So I'm gonna plug in the 60 watt panel and we can see now we just jumped up to uh, about a half an amp. Now we can pull power from our 100 watt panel and we're jumping up a little bit more. Again, hardly any sun, so this is really a bad demonstration, but we're still getting more power in here. And that's the same thing that happens with the mighty Mississippi. All that water that flows into there, it gets bigger and bigger as it goes. And that's the same thing with what's happening with this electricity. So in my experience, it's totally fine to use different wattage panels in your solar system, so long as they're the same voltage. So there you are, I hope that answers your question. Thanks so much for writing in and happy playing with your solar panels and your batteries and your charge controller, because I know I really like playing with mine. And guys, if you have amateur radio related questions for me, shoot me an email. I would love to hear from you. K8MRD at iCloud.com. My name is Mike, K8MRD. Thanks so much for watching Ham Radio Tube. We'll see you next time, 73.